Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another tournament report. I'm um, keeping it busy with the tournaments now. Uh, very happy to, get, to be getting back into it after our long break. So this time I went to Westeros and played at the GOW tournament, the 10th in the order. Um, don't ask me what the GOW stands for because they don't even know, the, know themselves anymore. Um, but yeah, I will be going through all three, fairly short, just three games in this tournament report. Um, and how I did, did in those, and some thoughts, and all of that. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it, and let's just get right into it. So I'm playing my Empire of Sornstahl. This is the first real tournament that I'm playing with them. And I only played one game beforehand, and that was a while ago. Um, so I'm <laughs> very excited to be bringing this army. Um, should probably have practiced a little bit, but whatever. Um, this is the list. Uh, you can pause it and look through if you want to have a closer look. But I will run it down fairly quickly. Uh, we have a marshal who's the general um, with some extra orders and imperial seal, so better discipline and some more protection. A prelate with death warrant, classic, and some protection. One up with rollable armor save. A marshal, the BSB um, with just yes protection. And then a wizard of cosmology, the heirloom, and a wizard of divination, both adepts. Um, and this one, the second one, is on an arcane engine with arcane shield and some protection. Then a big block of, of heavy infantry with halberds and the household standard. Um, light infantry with handguns and a long rifle. Small block of heavy infantry supporting unit, uh, electoral cav. A big block of Imperial Guard with great weapons and banner of unity. Two giants, one big, big brother with a giant club and the other with a giant repeater. And a Volagon and some rangers. Game one was against the Dwarven Holes, piloted by a lovely bloke named Hampus. And this is the list that he was running. He had a Thane in it, uh, but uh, you can pause it and uh, look through if you want to. I will go, go give it a quick run through when I uh, present deployment. And we are playing Encircle and Hold the Ground. So this is how he deployed. He dropped everything to go far, uh, first. And uh, you can see on from uh, left to right he has some Grudge Busters and Venue Seekers, a unit of Greybeards and Clan Warriors with a Thane. General, uh, the only character. Then he has two catapults and two gyrocopters, steamcopters, I mean. Uh, he has King's Guard, Greybeards, and more King's Guard in the center. And he will be dropping his uh, scouts shortly. We can have a look at my army. And this is the only time I will be putting labels on it. I hope you can learn to remember what the units look like. Uh, but Again, left to right, we have the Imperial Guard with the Prelate and the Heavy Infantry in front of them with the Knights and the Divination Wizard on the Arcan Engine next to them. Then we have the Heavy Infantry with the Battle Stone Bearer and the General in them, the Light Infantry with the Cosmo Wizard, the Volagon, and then the Giants on the flank, the small one and the big one. The small one having the Repeater, Giant Repeater. He dropped a unit of scouts. Uh, on my right flank, and then I dropped my scouts in the ruins on the left flank, and he answered with more scouts in the forest on the left flank. So uh, this is after his first movement, but he has some thoughts before this battle. Um, we uh, they did the pairings in advance, so we both had time to think this one through, and we did, and I was very careful about this matchup he had the catapults they th those were really the the most important units in this game probably because his units are as they are no problem for me to handle my units are big i can just go in and i have small support units i can for uh, force him to charge my big units with and stuff like that so i, I should be able to handle them no, no problem unless the catapults really deliver, because they will massacre my big units if they hit. So it all comes down to if they manage to hit my big units. And 
hand them. So my thought going into this was that I would um, be a bit reserved with the big units, harass him with the giants and stuff like that, see if I can draw his attention uh, with the catapults. And then maybe after I claim the objective I can go and uh, pounce on him uh, because we're playing hold the ground, see if I can move up and take that, uh, take it a few, few turns, make sure that he can't beat me on it, then I can advance further and, and try and get some points, points for him as well. And he must have figured pretty much the same thing, um, being very cautious to protect his catapults and uh, not engage me until I had, uh, until, until he had whittled, whittled me down. And also focus very heavily on uh, taking away my shooting capacity um early on so um that's that's what the game was going to be about um here we can see his first turn he didn't move at all pretty much only the venue seekers really moved up and then he opened fired and removed my volley gun turn one uh, so i wasn't gonna play with that at least and I moved up up the giant, the big brother giant a bit. The other one stood still to fire at the uh, venue seekers. And that I did. Uh, also the hand, uh, handgunners fired at it and I managed to delete one of them and put a single wound on, wound on the other, probably with the rangers. In his turn, um, he decided to, sh to charge with the venue seekers, uh, with the venue seeker on the uh, rangers. Uh, and he failed actually it wasn't a long charge i think he needed to throw like a four or something but uh yeah that can happen uh, and dwarves are only uh, advanced three so maybe it was more than that even uh, i'll focus on this flank for now uh, we'll look at the center of the table later but uh, this flank is pre fairly independent so let's just run th through it uh, his movement phase, he, he advanced a bit, uh, pushing up the grudge busters and the units, and focused fire on my uh, giant with the giant repeater, taking me down to two health point left. And yeah, that's what it looked like going into my turn, I think, or is that? No, I, I moved back the giant this turn, that's right. Uh, got a bit scared of the grudge busters, maybe unnecessarily so. Uh, And turn after that, he um, decided to try a long charge with the Greybeards into my uh, Rangers. And by now, in my shoot shooting phase, let's see here, I had put another wound on the uh, on the Venom Seeker. He, at some point, I think he managed to save two out of three. I, I, did, I, I cost, cost three wounds to him and he saved two out of three on six up, uh, so he managed to live. Uh, so that was a bit annoying. But he charged the Greybeards into my Rangers. Um, and then that was the only charge he did, I think. And he failed that one. Um, he was sort of hoping I would flee, um, but I didn't. And then remaining moves, he... Uh, moved the venue seekers quite, seeker quite aggressively to force me to deal with it basically and shooting he kept firing on the giant bring it down to one wound and then com removing it completely my turn i uh, rotated the um rangers to face the venue seeker and also the, did the same with the handgunners and the wizard and in the end i i used that uh, a nice fire on it to get rid of it, and he decided to let it, let it through because he, the, the venue seeker, was probably not going to survive that anyway. Uh, but I, I cast it because I just wanted to make sure that it, I got rid of it, it, so I couldn't risk that. And I moved up the giant. Uh, yeah, this must be. Uh, Maybe I have messed up here. I don't know. Uh, I think he charged again with the um, with the Greybeards into my uh, Rangers, but he failed again. Maybe he has moved up. Um, 
I think we're skipping a few turns here, but um, I moved up to Giant as well. He was very defensive with the Grudge, grudge Busters, and I figured that I could probably take a charge from them. So they did charge me, and uh, then he also charged the Greybeards into uh, the Ruins finally. And uh, the Giant was unharmed. He had tried to shoot it a little bit, but failed to wound it. And I figured that he goes in, he does 2d6 plus 2 impact hits. Um, that could kill him. Uh, oh, and by now, I have focused quite a lot of sh shooting power on one of the Grudge Busters, so one of them is at one health point left. Um, but he decided to, to, to go in and risk it. But he decided to use the grind attacks on them instead, which meant that we were striking at the same agility. So I only had five attacks. If he had used the impact hits and failed to kill me with them, I would have had a lot of more attacks. But I only had five, and unfortunately, I missed all of them, I think, or I, I didn't do a single wound at least on the get damaged on any of them. I, I directed all of them at the damaged grudge buster, but didn't do anything. So I didn't get that, and uh, they killed me, unfortunately. Uh, and the Greybeards overran as well. So let's get back to this situation but with the full board. Just have a look at what, what's happening on the, the grand scheme of, of things. Uh, so uh, it's a bit cagey, really. We're just staring at each other. Um, he's he managed a hit on the um, partial hit, I think, on the light infantry pretty early on in, in the game with the catapults. But otherwise, it was a lot of misfires. I was very, very fortunate in that. So I'm at long range still, uh, keep ticking up that um, secondary objective counter. Uh, but he just keeps misfiring. It's insane, really. I think, uh, like, more than half of the time that he fired, he misfired. Um, so he didn't do much damage at all to me. Uh, you can see here he puts forward a copter to uh, redirect me. I wasn't that keen on uh, advancing on, uh, on him anyway by this top point, uh, but fairly soon I was. So I killed one copter. I think this is where I start to push a little bit. Maybe I should have gone harder, uh, but the hill was nice. Uh, you can see he's whittled down a little bit on the smaller units, but still nothing on the big units. Another copter and some uh, um, rangers to move up to be in the way. And I kill both of those. Now the big infantry, uh, heavy infantry unit is quite far ahead. And then uh, he moves quite aggressively in, in return. Uh, you can see the um, uh, clan warriors on the on my left flank are starting to get in close now. And another ranger, ranger unit up front to be in the way. And now he finally managed to get a hit on the Imperial Guard unit and uh, took up out a rank, uh, eight of them, which is, it was a full hit and killing only eight was below average. So he's still not really, uh, doing good with the with the catapults, and you can see one he uses uh, the crew mo models as wound counters. So one has two left, and the other has three left, and all of those deaths are from misfires. I haven't touched them, so five misfires by now. Um, I decide not to charge. Or no, rather, no, no, no. This is an important turn. Uh, I decide uh, th this was a really, really tricky, si tricky situation for me here. Um, I could charge the big infantry unit into the rangers, but then they would be in a pretty tough spot where they would get a flank charge from something. Um, what I decided to do was try a charge with the Imperial Guard into the flank of the rangers. He couldn't flee it because if he did, then my big unit would charge his general block and kill it probably in a turn, um, so he couldn't risk that. Uh, I needed a 7 with a reroll to get in, uh, and then uh, if I did that, I could reform the, uh, or move the big heavy infantry unit to block his general's uh, unit, and take take care of that in a turn or two later, and reform com combat pivot the Imperial Guard to face the three units on, on top, which I could probably handle a charge from. Uh, he could only get two in uh, because the 
King's Guard uh, on, on, on the right there, they couldn't see me from that position, so should be able to handle those. But I failed that 7, in, uh, seven on dice uh, rerollable charge. So I just stumbled forward and then I just had to reform the uh, big infantry, heavy infantry unit to face both the rangers and the warriors. And here you can see that by this point he's cleaned up my left flank with the grudge busters and all of that. Uh, one of the grudge busters, the, the injured one, uh, ran off the table as well, uh, just to keep, help keep it safe. And in his turn, uh, you can see he moved the other, uh, the rangers again to be in my way. And now, finally, the catapults delivered. Both of them hit and brought my unit down to its knees, basically. Um, which, I mean, at this point, it was probably good that I failed the charge, because he probably wouldn't have charged me, uh, because it was he, he would have preferred to sacrifice one unit at a time and shoot me as much as he could. And what it would have meant is that he would have hit my unit would have been in his face and he would have hit twice and bring brought my unit down to what is this 12 models remaining uh, which is nothing um so probably actually a good thing that i didn't make that charge uh so this is how it looked after his movement going into my turn uh he charged i think one of the grudge busters into my um yeah, the, the remaining Grudge Buster can go back here. Uh, the remaining Grudge Buster here charged uh, a long charge on my Light Infantry and I decided to flee. Wasn't going to risk it. Um, and uh, then he uh, he failed that charge, of course. Uh, I, I fled like two inches, though, but it was all I needed. He need, needed like a double six to get in. And then moved up the other Grudge Buster coming back from the board and reformed the Greybeards to face the center of the board. By now, uh, I have ticked up enough uh, hold the ground counter, so the, the secondary objective is mine. Um, so in my turn, I charged the Imperial Guard into the Rangers, thinking at least they can handle that. I rallied the uh, Light Infantry with a steady, steady men, so they could still shoot. And more importantly, they could use magic, because that doesn't... Uh, they could, could have done that anyway if they rallied, but... Um, that is likely going to do more damage at this point. And I reformed the uh, uh, big heavy infantry block a bit to face the oncoming threat. And I think this is just the same picture. No, this is after combat, of course. Yeah, so uh, I did manage to break the rangers. <laughs> just barely, it seems. I didn't kill, kill like three guys here Yeah, with the Imperial Guard. Uh, and I didn't pursue because uh, then I would have been in a dangerous spot. And shooting and magic, I put everything I had into the uh, injured uh, grudge buster, but it didn't didn't manage to do that that last wound, uh, which was fairly unlucky. I, 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 yeah, he has a three up armor, and yeah, it, it could have happened certainly, but it didn't. Uh, so only got and that was the last chance I got before because after that he flew away with it to preserve the points so only got half of it but the danger danger was not quite over because he charged the flank of my heavy infantry unit uh, you can see here he only had 11 models when he charged in so if I do two I can keep my steadfast but unfortunately I only did one wound on him uh, despite having yeah, a, a few attacks, I mean it's it's not super unlikely, uh, but I did ha did have a marshal with three great weapon attacks there. I think he's the one who did uh, the only damage. Uh, so only did one, which which meant that he broke my steadfast, and I lost combat by four. So I had to roll a six um, with a reroll, and I did. I think I you managed it on the first try. So lucky for me actually uh, that i managed to uh, succeed in that uh, i didn't get to reform though so the combat went on for another round and then i didn't take any more pictures but i think that was pretty much the end of the game he, he charged my um impel guard unit a bit but i just r uh, ran away and then i rallied so it didn't uh, i think he got half points for it but uh, not full uh, and that's pretty much the end of the game
So we counted up the points um, and it was very, very even uh, difference of 87 points. So I draw and then I got the objective. So 13, seven for me, uh, making my total 13, of course. So good game for me. Uh, I thought this was a dangerous matchup for me and I managed to get a 13. So I'm very, very happy with that. Game two against the Vermin Swarm, and uh, this was piloted by uh, Daniel, uh, also known as Hombro de Mundo on the forums. So very happy to be facing him. Um, also quite excited to play Ver Vermin Swarm. It's the first time playing against the new uh, book, the uh, lab book. So that was bound to be exciting. And uh, yeah, this is the list that he used. Um, we, I'll go through it in the de deployment phase. But uh, I'll also say that we were using refuse flanks and capture the flags. So he dropped first uh, to go first. He, he dro dropped everything to go first. And uh, this is how he deployed. He had an arena beast out on the flank, some black for veterans which a, with a witchcraft priest, some slaves, the sails, and the house prefect. Um, also within range of the house prefect was the mouse rifle. He had a dictator with the close combat upgrades, some more legionnaires, or uh, no, some legionnaires <laughs> with the second uh, priest, the thaumaturgy priest, and a unit of Mormillo Brutes. And he also had uh, three Dustblade Assassins, ten Shadow First Stalkers, and an Stygian Earthbreakers. And you can see the tunnel markers uh, over there. He also had another one next to the field further to the right of this picture. So I deployed like this, um, nothing too special. Uh, of note though is the Voligon hiding behind the impassable. I wanted him, him to have hard cover from the uh, um, mouse rifle and uh, still be able to shoot at the Mormilla Brutes if they decide to advance on me. And I also put my knights behind the impassable because they are, score, are scoring units and we weren't going to do anything in this game anyway, so they can just hide and not lose that um, secondary objective for me. So he took the first turn and advanced up on me. He, I think he caused a debuff on my uh, heavy fan troop with his spells, and he also managed to cause Pentagram of Pain on the um, uh, on the small heavy infantry unit, the support unit, killing five. So that's quite quite a good roll. He also killed some more, I think, with his, his sails in that unit, uh, four of them, gone now, and he used the Marumilla Brutes to shoot at the big unit of Heavy Infantry, only killing two, though, with um, his weapons. Um, so that, that's a bit unfortunate. I think he was using Rotary Guns. I could be mis misremembering. I should have go back and check, but I'm, I'm not going to. Um, moving on. Uh, into my turn. I advanced up on the hill with the Imperial Guard and a bit ahead with the big infantry unit. Uh, and the rest stood still to shoot. Uh, the volley gun was out of range. I think I moved it up a little bit, but still uh, within hard cover of um, the mouse rifle. And shooting on the left flank, I tried with the Rangers and the Giant to do damage to the Arena Beast, but didn't do anything. But the uh, light infantry on the other flank, they did, uh, I think, four wounds in total with uh, with the magic, perhaps, uh, to the Romillo Brutes. And either in this turn or the turn after, I used a fireball on the mouse rifle doing two damage. Uh, and it got to fire a few times, but then uh, it uh, eventually had a mishap and, and destroyed itself. Um, so that was... Quite lucky for, me, lucky for me. In its first turn, it did, did two damage to my giant, uh, as we'll see in a moment, uh, because um, the giant was moved up here on the the right flank, and he deployed some um, shadow first stalkers to intercept it, and which uh, then he turned his uh, brutes around and uh, used uh, unloaded a lot of shooting on it, and I think he had one health point left. Uh, and I foolishly decided to just move him about a, a little bit to keep him 
uh, focusing and forcing him to to do something about the eye because he couldn't leave it on just one health point. Uh, so he, had, he would had to to like focus some energy on it still. Um, I should have charged the Shadow First Stalkers, but because the Terror would probably have made him flee, and that would have been some points. Um, however, he did move the Murmilla Brutes into the field and into range of the Volygon, so, though with cover, unfortunately. But uh, the uh, Volygon opened up, and so did the uh, Handgunners again, and did a lot of damage, just one of them left now. But they did kill the giant in the end, and I think I didn't I didn't manage to kill that last Murmilla Brutes, uh, uh, unfortunately. So back to uh, the big deal on the table. Um, this is the end of my f first turn, so he, going into his turn, he decided to pop all of his Duskblade Assassins into the Black Fur Veterans, and then he charged. Um, both the Black Fur Veterans into the Imperial Guard, and the uh, Vermin Legionnaires into the Heavy Infantry. And the Vermin Legionnaires had a debuff uh, perception of strength on them as well. And I uh, support charge with my support unit, unit into the Burma Legionnaires. The Swarm... Uh, no, why do I call it the Swarm Beast? Uh, arena, arena Beast killed the Rangers. No problem at all, and then it just reformed to face my Imperial Guard. But, uh, oh yeah, and his movement also, he moved the uh, Ruins dicta Dictator up aggressively, and then used uh, the Raven's Wing to place him over here, <laughs> behind my lines, and I'm not too happy about that, I'd, I'd say. Um, combat though, as you can see, I did a number on those uh, Vermin Legionnaires. Him hitting and wounding on 5 up was not ideal for him, um, because of distracting and the, and the perception of strength. Uh, but he did, he's unstable, so he's, he's not going anywhere. And the other combat also uh, worked well for me. He because of how he had placed this Swarm Priest, he was only able to get one Duskblade Assassin into contact with my Prelate. Um, and that Duskblade Assassin, and I think the four Black Fur Veterans managed to do two wounds to my uh, Prelate. And I think one other uh, Assassin did uh, kill my Champion. But then I attacked back and I killed both the Swarm Priest. No, the Swarm Priest is alive there. Well, I'm not sure. I think I killed two of the assassins at least uh, with my attacks and a bunch more models and then he, he crumbled a bit more. Um, and then I unfortunately forgot to take a few pictures. So uh, I think, yeah, here we can see uh, the arena beast is lined up to face the giant. And uh, in my turn here, uh, from this point, I had a choice to, I could charge the giant into the arena beast. But uh, and then I would I think I would strike at the same time, and so I would get five attacks. But then he would probably do a lot of damage to me and then kill me uh, in the second round of combat. Too. Um, so it would probably be better for me to uh, just stand in front of him and take the charge, and then I could shoot before as well. Um, although with the minus one to hit for moving. Because if he charges me, he attacks first, does some damage, and then I get to attack back with more attacks. Um, but I decided to redirect the Dictator instead um, with the Giant and move the cart, uh, the Arcane Engine, uh, up to the side of the um, Dictator to uh, just be safe, more or less. Um, and yeah, then, uh, then combat happened, and... Um, First, the uh, Vermin Legionnaires were obliterated by my heavy infantry. Um, to yeah, they they just disappeared, and then the same thing happened to the Black Fur veterans, uh, and I he didn't didn't even manage to to kill my prelate. So that was nice. Um, in his turn, he charged uh, the giant with the Ruinous Dictator, and he then. Uh, charged or uh, random moved into the rear of the Imperial Guard with the um, Arena Beast. And uh, uh, by the time that the uh, uh, Dictator charged the Giant, he had suffered one uh, wound. 
as I think he had six health points left, uh, but then he uh, managed to heal that with a pentagram of pain. And uh, however, the giant did two wounds to the swarm priest in the combat. He he attacked first and did a bunch of damage. I had quite a lot of attacks back, did two damage, and then I broke and ran off the table. And he overran into the girl guard. He is in combat here, um, but it was hard to place him correctly because of the hill. So he got to strike again in that combat uh, because they were already engaged with the swarm. With the, why do I call, call Swarm Beast? The Arena Beast. Uh, however, uh, unfortunately for him, the Imperial Guard did well. Uh, hatred is quite handy. Uh, so I hit a lot. Strength 6. I managed to do 5 wounds, which was just enough to kill him. So no more, no more Arena Beast. Um, no more Dictator, I mean. And then... Uh, I turned around and killed the Arena Beast afterwards, so then no more Arena Beast. Uh, I th at least think I managed to do that before the end of the game. Um, this is the last picture I have. We didn't, man didn't manage to finish the game. I think we played five turns. And uh, you can see he has a, big, uh, a pretty big death pile. Uh, the Assails are still alive and the Prefect is still alive, but the Cannon is dead uh, by now. Um, so counting out the points, he only killed... 1110, I killed 3835, a difference of uh, 2725. Uh, and I got to this scenario because he didn't kill any of my score units, and I killed two of his. Um, so 19 1 to me, giving me a total of 32 battle points, which I'm <laughs> very, very happy with, uh, going well so far. Game 3 against the Vampire Covenant. Uh, this army piloted by Mikael, and uh, this is the list that he was using. Um, you should, can absolutely pa pause it and have a look. I uh, had the uh, opportunity before this battle to just chat with the guy because it's it's such a unique list that I yeah I I saw it and had to had to chat with him. I also know him from before, um, and it's a very very special list. Um, having had that chat, I uh, I was given the imp the impression that it might be more powerful than I than it looked like. Uh, he seemed to have been having some success success with it, and I mean, uh, we were both in good positions for in, uh, going into this game, so he must have done fairly well. And uh, yeah, so I was a bit wary about what his list could do, but uh, at the same time, I do play uh, Vampire Covenant. So I thought of, uh, sort of knew what to expect. Um, but yeah, let's have a list at deployment, because he uh, dropped first. Oh, wait, wait, let's go back. We played in Circle and King of the Hill. Um, also important. So he dropped first. He, he chose the uh, big center for in Circle. Uh, so this is how he dropped. He has uh, a lot of zombies, so uh, from the... Uh, left, he has a big unit of zombies with a fell wraith, two altars of undeath, uh, the big unit of zombies in the middle, and more zombies behind them with a necromancer and a cadaver wagon in them, and then uh, another zombie unit with uh, BSP and general in it. And he will move out the uh, general from that unit soon enough, uh, but you, you want him there to make sure that Shrieking Horror could march in the first turn. And then he has a Shrieking Horror and some Spectral Hunters. Um, and like the point of this list is to just grind like few other things can. Um, he has the, the general, the, the general's unit can fight decently well because he gets poison and parry, and the BSP unit has a lot of static combat rests with uh, I think two um, legion standards. So those two are a bit of a threat. Uh, but mainly, <coughs> mainly he has wants to grind until the altars of undeath can start pumping out that damage to really hurt the enemy. So um, I deployed like this. Also in this picture, you can see my scouting um, rangers in the uh, water feature to the left. But this is how the rest of my army de deployed. Puts my uh, shooting uh, or my, my heavy shooting the war machine and the Giant on my right flank, over to the left in the picture, uh, and then some light infantry on the other flank. Um, 
Also of note, I put my wizard in the support unit here, the heavy infantry support unit, instead of my light infantry unit, because I wanted the magic missiles on that flank to deal with the spectral hunters. Uh, this objective, I picked the forest in my deployment zone, he picked the hill and they're in front of him for uh, marked uh, terrain features. So, um, here's a closer look at his uh, wonderful brick of zombies. Uh, it's a really beautiful army as well. Everything, uh, I think everything is designed and by himself and printed um, on his own printer. So really cool and unique army. Um, so that's neat. Uh, but we shall focus on the right flank first. Uh, just deal with that and then uh, see the rest of the battle. So he had the Shrieking Horror here and the Spectral Hunters and they moved up quite aggressively. Like so, he in his first turn he also managed to raise a unit of zombies. Uh, I tried to spell it with one die, but I failed. I didn't want to waste any more, more on it. Um, and so they, they might be a little bit annoying, we'll see. And shooting in my first turn, I managed to do uh, a single wound, I think, on the Shrieking Horror. Um, I tried to shoot a bit of both, I think, but maybe not. Maybe as a Shrieking Horror, because the Spectral Hunters on, are in uh, hard uh, cover. Oh, and he also managed to get through a, a Shilling Howl in his first turn. Turn. I think that's what I saved my dice for, but I still failed to dispel it. Um, so my shooting was minus one to wound. So I didn't do much against the Shrieking Horror in my first shooting phase. In his turn though, he also had some bad luck because bo both the Shrieking Horror and the Spectral Hunters uh, tried to charge my Volleygun. And they both needed like a decently high, I think maybe an 8 or a 9 or something like that. So not at all impossible with, uh, uh, with Switch Ride, but both failed. So that was lucky for me. He pushed the zombies up into the face of the gi giant as well to make sure that I couldn't. Uh, be too aggressive and redirect him and uh, his um, or, or charge his uh, spectral hunters and stuff like that. Um, but I didn't care about that. I instead opened fire <laughs> this time without the shilling howl, and I also managed to get a um, a uh, stars align on the volleygun this turn. So the volleygun was quite effective. So I did four wounds to the shilling horror, uh, and I. I think, I think he even saved quite well with his 6-up fortitude. Uh, so managed to bring the Shing Horror down to one health point remaining. Uh, so pretty much incapacitated. Here we can see the close-up of that. And he uh, retreated with the Shing Horror in his turn and he had he charged the uh, Spectral Hunters into the Volygon. And killed it, of course. And then I tried, the, the giant in, in my turn tried to shoot Shrieking Horror, uh, plink that last wound off him, but I failed. I think maybe I misfired or something? I don't re remember. Uh, the, Shing, the Spectral Hunter charged the giant, and that turned into a long combat, uh, which he eventually won. But I think I managed to kill two of his in, uh, in return. Uh, but he did win that, win that and uh, my giant. I think he killed my giant? Probably. Uh, but let's go back to the rest of the ta table, because there's a whole battle going on here. So, uh, this is uh, after my first turn. So in his f first turn he, he, he pushed forward uh, quite aggressively, uh, especially on, on the uh, right flank, which we've all already uh, discussed, and then the center pushed forward uh, decently as well. And here you can see the zombie unit that he raised. Uh, I answered by pushing very hard on my left flank. Uh, there was nothing there really thre threatening my giant or the knights, at least not early game. Uh, when the altars of undeath get going, then maybe there could be some more damage there. Um, but I also advanced my center a little bit. Uh, and he responded by moving one of the zombie units to try and uh, uh, stop my giant and knights and and this is i think one of the strangest things he did in the game he moved the altars of death uh, both of them actually up on the hill so that he didn't get cover uh, and i don't understand why he did that uh, but he did and he advanced a little bit for, further in the center as well 
but keeping it fairly um, restrictive. And uh, yeah, here we, here we can see the giant from the other angle. Um, in my turn, I uh, pushed forward again. I didn't bother to charge the uh, zombies with the giant, I just moved past them, um, aiming to get those altars of death, really. And uh, uh, also thinking that I could go after this bunker if I got a, got a good opportunity. And I pushed forward in the center as well. Also, by now, I moved the wizard out of the unit, uh, the supporting unit uh, on my right flank. Uh, he's just running around on his own. I figured that he was, he didn't have much in, in long range damage, only a few uh, pentagon pains, pound spells, so I figured he would be alright on his own. Um, and then, then I would, they, he would be easier to uh, keep away from the spectral hunters as well. Um, but yeah, uh, we are closing in on, on the combat here, uh, and here we can see I opened fire at the Altar of, of Undeath on the on the left here uh, with my Light Infantry and did two, two damage, which was pretty good. I think they have six health points. No, I did four damage, that's right, so he counts that way. Um, so he only has one health point left by this point, I think. Um, and like this is... This was a key to to winning this, I think. Uh, whittling down these these two models, or again getting, ri getting ri ri rid of them before they can really start pumping out that damage. So that I, I was trying hard to do that. Uh, he charged with his. Uh, in my movement, uh, let's go back here. In my movement, I made sure that he couldn't. Uh, or, or he would have a hard time to get both units into uh, a single of my units. Uh, I think he could still manage it here if he charged the heavy infantry. Um, but at least he wouldn't get both in my Imperial Guard. Uh, I, I was a bit hesitant about him, get, him getting both because then he has the ranks, uh, rank bonus and the attacks from the, from the poison unit um, because, he, because of Ghoul Lord. Um, but he went into combat and uh, he killed a few of mine, not that many, you can see, uh, I think six guys went down. Uh, I accepted it, uh, I think he at attacked my BSB with his uh, Ghoul Lord, uh, with his general, but um, I had parry and distracting and he only had a halberd, so he hit me on 5 up, so it didn't do much at all really, um, so that was fortunate for me. And uh, I killed a few in, in return, but not that many. Uh, he moved around the uh, uh, Altars of Undeath. I think he mostly planned to just do damage to my giant, but I mean, this is turn 3, I think, so they're not really high strength yet. Um, and he actually, he, he made sure I couldn't charge them with my giants, at least, with my giant, so I couldn't like, kill them easily. But he left some other things quite open, as we'll see. Uh, so in my turn, <laughs> you can see there's a lot of zombies missing here. Um, I charge the knights into the bunker up top. He has to lock it down. I have two up armor save against his attacks, so I should should be fine for a while. Uh, and my light infantry managed to kill the injured uh, altar upon death, which was very very lucky for me. But the big thing here is that the giant, um, the big brother giant, charged into the flank of the a general's zombie unit, and I charged my Imperial Guard into the, their front as well. This man, meant that I got uh, battle, fo battle focus against his unit after my prelate hit. So the giant had battle focus on his five attacks, or maybe seven attacks, he had taken some wounds from the, the, the auras by now, and he got his uh, maximized uh, thunder stomp against the units as well. So I did a lot of damage. And you can see there's only a, like a few, uh, some very very few models left there, uh, including the general. So in his turn, he uh, he decided to charge with the B space unit into the imperial guard, imperial guard, and he charged the other unit, the zombie unit there. He had turned that around, um, so it's facing um, my line. Um, not by now. Uh, he did that earlier, but he charged that into my flank of the heavy infantry unit, 
but he, he rolled a double one. I think he needed to roll a four, uh, so he failed, uh, which was quite lucky for me. Although if he had managed, I could have done a support support charge, a counter charge with my light infantry into his flank, um, which, I mean, it's just uh, light infantry, so they won't do much damage, but... Uh, and again, it's just zombies, so they won't do much damage either. Uh, so I, I felt pretty confident about uh, that situation anyway. But this is how it ended up. Uh, the big train of zombies is in, in my face now. Um, you can see the Spectre Hunters are now in combat with the Giant as well on the right flank. And the combat there... Oh yeah, he charged me, so I can't charge, charge with, with my uh, support unit. Uh, and they, they <laughs> funnily, funnily enough, they could just power on ahead and, and make contact high up there if, if they wanted to, and they, they did. Uh, he also moved the uh, Altar of Death to stand right next to my giant. Uh, figuring that was the safest place, which was probably true. But combat did not go too well for him. Um, the general's unit is gone. Uh, and I think, yeah, yeah, I, I killed the whole unit with my cross combat attacks. And then he, uh, I think this is what I killed. Uh, and then he uh, crumbled and the gener general died. Um, so yeah, no, now things are starting to happen very fast. Um, the Shrieking Horror died to the Ashes to Ashes when the, when the general died. Uh, the Spectral Hunters did not, uh, a, bit, uh, a bit fortunate for him. And then the uh, the, the uh, necromancer took up uh, upholding the army, and I think that uh, the altar for death was fine as well. But um, the turn after, uh, you can see the giant. He's actually facing the other way, but he didn't fit uh, in, in the spot <laughs> that way. His big club was in the way, so uh, but he's facing the um, the uh, BSB unit, and he in. My turn, he shot into, into that that one, and I think I killed that unit in one or two rounds of combat. Afterwards, um, it was quite nasty. So fairly quickly, we had a situation where um, the center had been evaporated for him, and I turned around to face the various threats. Uh, he, uh, yeah, here you can see he killed the giant with the spectral hunters. And I charged the uh, Imperial Guard into the Spectral, Spectral Hunters, killing them um, once and for all. Uh, and we can go back to this picture. He charged his zombies into my heavy infantry unit, and I countercharged with the light infantry unit, killing those as well. He also charged the uh, Altar of Undeath into my small supporting unit, um, one up there, and uh, I killed the zombies and the, and the Felwraith, but he eventually killed uh, the small supporting unit, uh, he got charged in the summoned zombie unit uh, to help there, and he, that did help, so he killed them. And I had charged my giant, giant into the rear of his bunker, the knights were still, still going at it there, um, and the giant didn't make it in time to make any real difference. I didn't get any points from that unit. Uh, but he did charge the altar of death into the rear of the giant. And I did kill that, at least. Um, I was very lucky towards the end of the uh, game there with, with uh, his uh, the, the aura of death not really doing that much against my army. He rolled quite poorly for it. But then again, he only had one. He was used to having two. Uh, but I, I did get really quite lucky, lucky during this game. His, his uh, general's block didn't do much damage at all to me, and um, that that helped me break it um, quite fast, really, really fast actually. And as I said, the altars of death didn't deliver as he ex had expected. But uh, it was a big win for me. I also got got the objective here. Here you can see my uh, two units up on the hill there, grabbing his his uh, marker. So in the end, it was a uh, big victory for me. I only bled a uh, thousand points, 
a little bit more and took 4180 from him so a difference of 3150 and I got objective so 20 points for me bringing my total up to 52 battle points and at the top of the tournament unfortunately this is when they told me that there was also a second day to the tournament I I lied at the start of the, the, this uh, uh, report this, uh, this is actually a five game tournament not just three uh, so I, I just had to reproduce the amazing results I had first uh, in the first day uh, going into the second and I would be fine but uh, we'll see how I manage that game four against the demon legions commanded by Peter and the pairings for this game were made in advance so I knew uh, made the day before so I knew well well in advance what I was going to face and had plenty of time to get nervous about it because Peter is an ETC player or at least I'm pretty sure he has played at ETC but maybe because of Corona it didn't happen I'm not sure but he's at that level for sure a very very competent player so I had plenty of time to get nervous and uh, I'm just gonna spoil it in advance uh, this game did not go well uh, i made pretty much every mistake in the book i think every decision that i could make i sh chose the the poorer one uh, it felt like at least and uh, yeah so i'll, I'll be go going through the game fairly quick and then at the end i'll tell you what i should have done and maybe i could have gotten some more points from it um but uh, still exciting uh, I, i've never been this high up in uh in a position leading the tournament of the game three uh, before so i was nervous and uh, it was uh, not going to go well as we shall see so this is the list that uh, my opponent was using and we were playing marching columns and secure target and i had uh, the, the i knew the secondary objective and deployment in advance but that changed a bit um, before uh, we actually got to the table so uh, that part was a bit jumbled in my head uh, so I blame that a little bit for my mistakes but I can't blame all of it on that uh, I just played not very well well so he dropped first uh, and dropped some chaff out on my right flank I uh, countered him and, and on that flank I dropped um, the giant some Knights and a uh, score a small scoring uh, supporting unit, small supporting unit, and then he dropped the rest. Uh, so here we can see how he deployed. You have some sirens, uh, some brazen beast, the blood flies, the imps, the two legion threshers, uh, succubi with the two harbingers, some more imps, some furies behind them, and more sirens out on the flank. And I dropped this to counter him. Uh, the scouts are not, not deployed yet. They went up on the hill. Um, but uh, also worth mentioning is that the objectives, you can see one marker next to the uh, giant repeater giant. Uh, so far in my left flank. And I dropped my, my marker straight up in the back corner um, of my left flank. So that's where the action is going to be for the secondary objective that's for sure so here we can see the scouts being deployed and then the vanguard and the vanguard he took the first turn as i said and moved up aggressively here with the sirens ready to harass me and the rest of the army pushed up a fair bit um, and he put twisted effigy and I think this was the first mistake I made or oh, no not not the first the first was deployment but uh, in the game this was a mistake uh, I forgot that he had this spell I dispelled his hand of heavens on my scouts instead uh, and let this one through so I couldn't fire the volgon in my first turn um, I decided to uh, uh, like uh, immediately after the deployment pretty much I realized I had fucked up uh, so I tried some long charges um, the Imperial Guard into the flies and I think the heavy infantry into um, first the sirens um, causing them to flee and then into one of the th threshers um, just because they didn't know, know what else to do uh, what I realized I should have done actually is I should have charged the um, 
with light infantry into the sirens probably because I couldn't flee that charge uh, and then I could maybe break the unit in combat um, and then I could flee any charges that he, that he declares at me and I could have gotten better positions with, with my big units but I didn't do that uh, just pushed up a little bit and he um, mangled my army uh, he charged the bloat flies into uh, my light infantry you can go back to this picture and I decided to flee another mistake I should have just held and just sacrificed them to maybe do a little bit better elsewhere um, but I fled and then he charged the thresher uh, I fled like two inches then he charged the, the thresher engine into the light infantry and I fled and he redirected into the Voligon, who I had moved backwards a bit um, with the th Thresher, and then the Bloat flies redirected into the Heavy Infantry with another Thresher. So we ended up like this. Uh, you can see uh, one of the Thresher is just going to go through that Voligon and then into my Arcane Engine. And I think in my shooting phase I managed to put a decent amount of wounds on one of the th Threshers, uh, but not close to killing it really. I had the option to support charge the bloat flies in the flank with my little supporting unit but for some god knows what reason I put my scouts up ahead uh, in front of his succubi so they could get through that and he charged those uh, with the succubi so if I had made a supporting charge he could have made the uh, ranger uh, un combat first and then overrun into the flank of my supporting unit. So wouldn't have gained anything from doing that, so I didn't. Again, another mistake of uh, being so aggressive with this, the chef when I didn't need to. And uh, he killed the Voligon and made it into the uh, Arcan engine and killed that as well. Uh, next chance he got. And he mangled my uh, heavy infantry unit quite bad. Uh, overrun a, a good deal with the uh, succubi. Uh, and rallied the sirens who had fled and moved back, and then popped up some furious, no, not furious, uh, mage bite gremlins behind my wizard who had, had uh, at least I had the sense to abandon him from the uh, light infantry unit so I could keep him in the game a little bit longer. Uh, the giant charged the succubi, did some damage, took some in, in return, then he reformed and killed it. Uh, here, you can, here you can see it's still alive, and my heavy infantry is dwindling fast. Uh, I have done some damage to the blow flies. He didn't want to remove the models because they were fiddly. Um, uh, but I think by the end of the combat he had three left, so something at least. And I did some damage to the th threshing engi engine as well. Not that it mattered. Uh, I didn't get... But yeah, I did kill one of them in the end. We'll see. Uh, he charged the other thresher into my giant here, as well as the gremlins and uh, uh, the giant actually man managed to kill the thresher that's the one point I got uh, pretty much and he killed the giant in return um, and by now the heavy infantry unit is dead he uh, I think he killed oh the knights are fleeing uh, from uh, some fire from uh, um, the imps I failed every discipline test I made, pretty much. Uh, discipline 8. Um, that was a bit annoying. It wouldn't have made a difference if I had passed them, but yeah, I, I, passed, I tried like 4 or 5, or 3 or 4 uh, discipline 8 tests and failed all of them. I passed the break test, of course, uh, discipline 9 reroll and stuff like that, but the single discipline 8 test I failed uh, continuously. And here, here he is positioning himself a bit. By now I have, uh, the wizard has moved into the unit, so that I have his spells and the prelate left for magic, uh, so I can try and use the uh, magic missiles, um, ice and fire, but he's going to dispel that, and I get some buffs, buffs through, but not the most important ones. And he just encircles me, uh, charges with the chef units, um, because attacking from the rear and uh, flank uh, I'm not going to do much damage in return and then after he wasted my hatred he charges with the um, threshing engine and the brass and beast and annihilates the unit.
And we didn't even count points here. I, I got one thrashing engine and he killed my entire army. So, uh, and he got to be active, of course. So, uh, zero points for me. So, still at 52. Uh, but let's have a look back at the first um, picture of the whole table and what I should have done um, that I didn't realize at the time. And I blame marching columns a bit for this because I hadn't planned for that. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, I messed up. But I should have done when he dropped uh, up in the uh, right corner, started going from that edge. I should have chosen the other edge and go from that one. And I should have dropped a unit of knights there and then dropped the two giants um, a bit closer to the center, but still keeping it fairly close there to try and bait him to um, go a bit hard on the objective. The knights would have forced him to put at least a unit of imps there, but maybe something more because uh, imps against knights is not an ideal matchup, so he, should have, he would have needed something more punchy to deal with the knights. And the giants, I could have moved back to my lines uh, instead, and I should have dropped my whole army, yes, cornering on my right hand side, abandoning the objective completely, and just trying to preserve points. That's that's what I should have done. But I didn't, and it cost me a lot. Uh, maybe I could have got like six points, five points if I had cornered like that, because I'm not sure if he wants to go into a corner, li corner uh, line like that, um, if I had done it well. But I didn't. So that's end of game four. Uh, still on 52 points. So I'm, I mean, I'm doing well still, I think. Uh, but uh, one more game left. Game five, the final game of the tournament, and I was again up against Demon Legions. This time commanded by Andesh, a very pleasant bloke. Uh, so we're up for another game of demons. This is his list. We can pause it and have a look. We were playing Dawn Assault and Secure Target again. So doubling up on that secondary objective against the demons. So we, um, uh, I, I won the role for choosing sides, pick this one. And uh, he forced me to drop first, I think. And then we, we uh, uh, dropped off a few times uh, before uh, I decided to drop everything and go first. I di <laughs> I didn't want to go back and forth uh, because I knew I would mess up my deployment too much if I did that. Um, and I didn't want to drop everything and let him have the first turn. So this was um, the solution I came up with. The downside is, of course, that we're 24 inches apart, so I won't be able to shoot at anything in my first turn. Um, this is how he dropped. We have the Brass and Beasts out uh, on the uh, left flank, some Succubi uh, and a unit of Imps with the two Harbingers, a smaller unit of Succubi and between them a Blazing Glory, a Scourge, two Legion Threshers and another Blazing Glory between them, and some Sirens up front, who I, uh, I were able to shoot at in my first turn. Uh, though they were behind cover, hard cover from the hill. So I w would not be able to do much with my Bolygon on them. And I think they're hard target as well, so I was like minus three to hit. So uh, I'm not even sure if I tried shooting at them. Uh, in my first turn, I put on the double on pretty much everything and pushed hard on my uh, left flank. Wanted, wanted to put a little bit of distance between myself and that impassable drain piece in my left hand corner. Um, also of note is that uh, the train piece here in the middle or, or uh, um, yeah where my knights, Bolygon and supporting unit is, that's a field. It looks like a hill but it is a field. Um, you can see the objective markers placed as well. Uh, I have one in front of my um, Heavy infantry, and the other is more center on the table. And my scouts are up in the water feature there. Uh, so I pushed hard and didn't do much shooting. Uh, I think I tried some spells to get rid of the um, uh, sirens, but I didn't do much with my, with my first magic phase. I think it was a total blunder, unfortunately. In his turn, he charged the sirens into my knights. 
uh, and then um, his magic face was uh, this is a bit later then, uh, but his magic face was focused on buffing the sirens, and I stopped a few of his spells, but I think got two through. Uh, he had a very nasty magic face, in my opinion. Uh, a lot of buffs and a lot of uh, nasty spells. So he killed two knights, I think, and I didn't kill anything in return, and I broke and ran, and he needed a nine to get into the Volygon, but he rolled an eight, so one inch uh, away from it. And in my turn, I turn both my wizards around, the one in the unit, um, one in the Light Infantry unit, walked out to uh, uh, be able to face the sirens. He hid behind the uh, wagon, um, and I used my, my magic to blow it away. Also, my magic, I did, uh, that was like the first thing I did in the magic phase, and then I... Um, Manage, I, I rolled four dice to cast Stars Align on my uh, Lightning Infantry to uh, pummel the uh, Succubi, was my plan. And I <laughs> rolled, I miscast five, uh, three fives, and because it was it was a certain magic uh, flex card, I got plus one, so uh, counted as a, a triple six. And it meant my uh, wizard, uh, the uh, Arcane Engine, took three health point damage. And uh, that was just enough to make it extremely vulnerable to a spear of infinity. And that is exactly what happened uh, in his turn. He managed to kill it. And fortunately, I passed all of my uh, panic test, which was not at all guaranteed. Some of those were on um, seven or eight. Uh, and the reason for that is that for some reason I thought it was a good idea to march these guys up aggressively on my left flank. Um, my thinking was that it was it's a big unit and I have my giant. Uh, they should be able to handle three um, Bass and Beasts and a uh, Blazing Glory fairly quickly and then I can turn them around and move to the center of the table again. Um, but it did mean that my general was out of range for big parts of my uh, rest of my army. In the end, it didn't really matter. That's not what uh, did me in. Um, but uh, it was foolish. And as we'll see, uh, the combat didn't go as we expected here. Uh, in his turn, he charged, and he managed to cast... Uh, what's it called? Um, the di Discipline spell um, of Evocation. Uh, I, uh, Whispers of the Whale, it's, it's called. So I was had one less discipline, and I was uh, wounding him on five up. Uh, may yeah, the, bla the blazing glory on sixes. So. Uh, but the blazing glory and the brass and beast charge, and unfortunately, I was not able to make any good counter charge with the giant. Uh, I was in the front of both units. I wonder now, in hindsight, maybe I could have flank charged the Brass and Beasts, actually. I probably could have. Oh, that's a shame. Um, but he, he, yeah, maybe I could, that could, I could have done that, actually. Uh, but uh, as we saw it there, I could not, and I could charge the, counter charge the uh, Blazing Glory in the front, but he would just issue a challenge, and I could not deny it, because I would lose my discipline, the only thing keeping me in this fight. Um, so the AI would not be able to attack, and even if he could attack, he would hit on 5 up with 5 attacks, so he wouldn't do much damage anyway. And in combat, I accepted a duel with my uh, BSB. He at least has parry and a 5 up Aegis, and that did fairly well. He survived the first round of combat without taking any damage. In my turn, I moved up the giant uh, like so. Um, wanting to charge next turn at least, uh, but it's a lot of combat rounds before I'm able to do that. And uh, he pummeled my BSB uh, one health point left by now. Uh, and then uh, the turn after, uh, in his turn, he um, went after the general, and I think he survived one round. Um, and, but then in my turn, I uh, counter-charged. Oh yeah, also in this combat, in the first round of combat here, um, I only did one wound to the Brass and Beast, despite having quite a lot of attacks with uh, Brace for Impact. 
Um, and it probably wasn't that I w- was wounding on five up. I, I like with all of my attacks, like twenty something. Uh, I like hit twice or something like that. <laughs> it was really, really bad roll. Um, but eventually, I did get my giant in. But that turn, he had by now he had killed my giant, no, no my, my general with the uh, um, blazing glory, and my unit was almost down to a man. So he managed to break that unit and ran it down with the Blazing Glory. The giant actually held, uh, so the Brass and Beast was locked. Um, and But the Blazing Glory was free and he ki- charged and killed my uh, wizard who was now by, by now out, over on this flank. Um, so he was gone fairly quickly as well. The giant, however, after a few rounds of combat, did, did manage to kill the Brass and Beast, so that was nice at least. So back to this situation. Um, it's my turn, uh, I think here. Uh, yeah, uh, this is uh, this is going into my turn after his charge. So I moved a giant up there and I shuffled my lines around a little bit, but not nothing too too much. And my volley gun, I think it misfires actually and it's not able to shoot anymore. Uh, so I've, I've done a little bit of damage on the threshing engines. However, the succubi are down to like 12 models left. Um, my shooting has been fairly effective at it, and I've done a few wound, a wound, number of wounds on the scourge as well, who has fl- flown up um, to this position by now. Um, yes, going forward, he um, <clears throat> uh, he declares a charge with the with the scourge against my giant with the giant repeater and fails it, so he ends up here. Uh, it doesn't take any damage from the ruin, unfortunately. But he has uh, taken like four health points, wounds, I think. So it's like three health, health points left. Something like that, at least. Um, and then <coughs> uh, we can go back to this picture. He charges the Thrashing Onions, one into the Volagon, one, one into the support, supporting unit, and both make it. And he kills the Volligan and overruns into the flank of the supporting unit. Uh, so they are having a rough day. And uh, he uh, kills them down to a single file uh, or rank. But uh, they are steadfast because the big unit is next to them. So And they are supporting units. So they are steadfast, unfortunately. Um, elsewhere on the, on the table, he moved the um, uh, Blazing Glory up to block my um, Imperial Guard from charging his um, Scourge or anything at all. So all I did was back up a little bit. And in his turn, he declared a lot of charges. Uh, I, in my shooting, I pl- uh, plinked off a few more wounds on the Scourge. I think he was at one health point left. And he decided to do a Hail Mary and charge the um, Imperial Guard with the Scourge, and I declared stand and shoot with the uh, Lightning Factory. Uh, I think maybe I had forgotten that I could do that. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, I did, and I killed the Scourge, so that was nice at least. Um, he also charged the um, Blazing Glory into the Giant, the Succubi into, uh, and the Succubi into the uh, Imperial Guard, and then both Threshing Engines, who by now were freed up from the um, supporting unit, into the flank of the Imperial Guard. So this is how we ended up. Not looking too hot for my Imperial Guard. Uh, they did have st- steady men at least, so uh, um, there's that. But uh, the General is far away, or maybe dead by now. So not looking too good. Another shot of that. Combat he does a number on my unit, uh, to say the least, and I take off another six succubi. Uh, the giant holds up fairly well against the Blazing Glory. I think it take, takes one wound, but it didn't, didn't do anything in, ret- in return, but at least it didn't break. Um, and he's killed the wizard by now up here with the other Blazing Glory. And I turn my unit around and shoot at the Blazing Glory and does two wounds, so that's fairly good actually. Combat, he uh, whittles, whittles down my unit quite a bit, and uh, uh, I didn't do any damage to him this turn. And then I break and he overruns into the giant with one of the th- thrashing engines, kills the di- giant and overruns into the, the uh, uh, light infantry who uh, were charged by the um, Blazing Glory. 
and then he kills that unit as well. Um, so that's the end of the, th the game, and a nice thumbs up from my opponent there. Um, I did not kill a lot. Unfortunately, there, I uh, had I done one more wound on the succubi, I would have gotten half points from from them, but I didn't. So I killed like the sirens, the brass and beast, and the scourge. So not a whole lot. Uh, going up to uh, 1,518 points, and he killed everything of mine except the giant, the big big brother giant, and the uh, uh, rangers. So different difference of almost 3,000 points, and he got the objective as well. So. Just a single point for me, uh, 19 for him. Uh, bring my total up to 53 battle points. So that's the end of the tournament for for, for real now. There was no day three, um, but um, all in all, I say I'm pretty happy with that. It's my first tournament with um, Empire Sword Style, and my goal is always to break the 50 point limit, and I did that day one. Um, I sure wish I would have done better day two, and I think I could have. Um, but in hindsight, I realized that I I really don't like playing games um, where I like aim to lose, but lose as little as possible. That's something you should be able to do if you want to score high. high but I find those games quite boring to play, so I prefer to just try and get as many points I, I can and. Uh, that often means I lose those games instead. Um, so, I, I mean, it is foolish, but uh, I think I enjoy playing those games mo more that way, at least. Uh, for sure, this this last game, Game 5 here, that was a fun game. Uh, and I, if I had, like, done uh, what I said I would do in Game 1, oh, no, in Game 4, uh, corner up, ignore the objective, just shoot him, keep him away, and, and get, playing like that, I could probably have got, gotten more points out of this game as well, but it would have been a much less interesting game. Uh, so, there's that. And as I said, 53 points, I'm happy with that. Um, can't complain at all. In general, my thinking with, of the list is that it's performed fairly well. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a decent list, I think. Uh, one thing I should have done um, I should have uh, maybe taken some other spells. I felt like I had a few too many uh, ranged spells often. I needed some more combat buffs. I think I relied too much on actually having the um, uh, the blessings. The problem with the blessings is that they uh, can only target one unit. And the way I place my characters, that unit was seldom in combat. And that's another thing I think I should have uh, been more flexible with, maybe placing my prelate in the heavy infantry unit and the BSB in the um, Imperial Guard sometimes, uh, because the Imperial Guard unit is such a tough nut to crack, so people will mostly just avoid it. And even if I don't have hatred and uh, um, blessings in that unit, so if I spread, um, if I put the Prelate in with the heavy infantry, that unit becomes a lot more, a lot stronger, and it's not like the Imperial Guard or pushovers just because they don't have hatred. They will still have stubborn because of the BSB and um, still strength six and a lot of attacks and distracting because of the wagon. If I manage to keep that in range, so I think that's something I should have been more thoughtful of. Uh, but uh, it's easy to get stuck in a loop when you're trying out a new, new army. Um, just you have this set way of deploying, so you do that every time. Um, but overall, <laughs> a very very fun tournament. Uh, I am very thankful towards Dennis for hosting it. It was a great time uh, coming back to back to Westeros after a long hiatus. And uh, big thanks to all of my five opponents uh, for these wonderful wonderful games and a great weekend. And Thank you in the audience for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tournament report. Cheers.